the supply chain nightmare that's been plaguing the United States for the past couple of years is set to remain for the long term. It's aggravating shortages, resulting in historic slowdowns in domestic production, and at the same time, retailers are grappling with record shipping costs and weakening consumer demand. A lot of us expected the crisis to ease somewhat since the health crisis has started to fade away, but experts say that's not the case at all. In a repeat of 2021, thousands of empty containers are piling up at U.S. ports, contributing to five-digit container prices. Shipping is very expensive, and empty shelves across the country are starting to show up again. In some places, rationing has already begun. This is why I've been telling you to get food stored, and why I'm trying to help people out with freeze-dried wholesalers, and my link that gives you a 15% discount. So today, I'm going to show you a few items that I picked up, and we're going to test them out. As you can see, the supply chain crisis is just getting worse, or ongoing, depending on where you shop. What you saw in the intro were pictures of various stores around town here, and the shortages I'm seeing is a peanut butter shortage, believe it or not. I can't find peanut butter without being very, very low in most aisles. But I'm going to start off the video by telling you, if you folks find that you can't afford freeze-dried food, we're going to do a little demo cooking today, but if you folks can't afford, find you can't afford that stuff, by all means, don't worry. You can watch the video and have fun with it, but go out and buy yourself canned food and buy as much of it as you can afford. Even if your budget was 20 bucks a week, you may want to up it to 30 right now. If all you can afford is going to the Dollar Tree and getting stocked up, it's definitely time to do it. Because I feel that with the price of shipping, the price of gas, the price of diesel, the various shortages we're seeing all over the place, things are only going to get worse. So I'm going to quickly run through some of the things I picked up this month from freeze-dried wholesalers, and then we're going to get into cooking some breakfast with some of the freeze-dry wholesaler food that I have here, and I'll show you how easy it is to use and prepare with. So, first of all, freeze-dried penny pasta. The pasta crisis has seemed to ease up a little bit. There is pasta on the aisles lately in most of the stores. However, I like the fact that I have a little extra put away. Plus, I love penny pasta. Uh, some ground turkey, freeze-dried ground turkey. This is good for anything, for burritos, for hamburger meat, you know, if you want to toss it in something with, like, macaroni and cheese, whatever, it's good for that. Freeze-dried albacore tuna. We're going to have to give this stuff a try on camera. I have not tried it yet. I did get two of them, so we can try one, and we will definitely test it out. Freeze-dried chicken patty with duck fat. I love these things. They're really good. They do take a while to hydrate naturally if you just stick them in water. So make sure if you plan on cooking them, you hydrate them ahead of time. I would give it an hour in water, to be honest with you. Next up, freeze-dried chicken nuggets. I did demo making these. Um, you want to steam these. You definitely don't want to soak these in water. And if you have a rice cooker, or if you can buy a second-hand rice cooker with a steamer bowl, you're fine. These will cook perfectly. These will warm up nice and warm. They'll get nice and hot. You steam them, and all that steam will go through them and hydrate them perfectly. Cheddar cheese. Again, we did see some cheese shortages. We're still seeing some stuff around town that's kind of out of cheese. So I did pick up more cheese. Freeze-dried zucchini. This stuff is really good and hydrates very, very, very quickly. <laughs> Freeze-dried cheese powder. Okay. And this is uh, white cheddar. This will be really good if you want to take your macaroni, your noodles here. And where did I put it? There it goes. Penny pasta. And hydrate this and mix up some of this. You can make yourself some mac and cheese very, very simply. And lastly, my favorite, the freeze-dried hamburger patties, uncooked. These are really good. Again, they do take a little while to hydrate. And I'm finding that when I hydrate this stuff, the best thing to do is find a way to force it underwater. Let's say you want to make two of these patties. You put it in a big bowl with water, and you put something on top of it to let them sit down there. And you'll see the bubbles coming up, and they'll hydrate very, very quick that way. So, let's get into what we're making this morning for breakfast. All right, so the only thing missing from this picture was the freeze-dried eggs, because I used the last of them, and I do have to order more. Did forget that in my last order. I will be ordering more. They last a good long time, and I've actually been using them. So that's why they're out. They're really good. So I'm going to have the freeze-dried eggs. we got the freeze-dried hash brown potatoes. Freeze-dried jack, cheddar jack cheese, freeze-dried turkey sausage. I like this stuff better than the other sausage. I really do like it. It's actually pretty good. And freeze-dried Canadian bacon. We are going to try some of that out. I haven't tried it before, so we're going to test it out. So I have hydrated this stuff ahead of time to save time with the video today. So we're going to be cooking it on my little propane grill. These are very underrated um, in the prepping world. 
Uh, a lot of people will tell you, oh, be careful about carbon monoxide and stuff, but let me tell you something. When I worked in the restaurants and banquet industries for years, this is what we use to cook in a restaurant, literally. When you're out there cooking on a banquet station, this is what you're using. So if they're that deadly, you know, they're doing something wrong. Um, honestly, you just want to make sure you have a little bit of ventilation, but these are still fairly inexpensive compared to other fuels, and you can still pick them up and stock them up, and these stoves run about 20 bucks. I mean, this is a gas one uh, version, and, you know, that's usually the most expensive ones out there, and I think it was like 19-something. So Walmart has them. I think they have a Coleman one that's like 17 or $18. Again, you want to get it before prices start really going up, but they're very good for home cooking. So that's what we're using today to cook. Okay, let me set it up. I'll show you how it works. Basically, all you're going to do is stick your can in there. Make sure this little spring aligns with that notch in there. Push it in and lock it into place. Close the door. That's simple. To start it up, you're just going to push it over here. And there you go. It's really that easy to use. So, let's get the food out here. Turn that off. Let's get the food out here. And we'll show you what we're making for breakfast. Now, today we're going to be using regular kitchen pans. These are smaller, but I want to let you guys see that you can use your regular stuff that you use at home. You don't need to go out and buy expensive camping stuff if you're planning on bugging in and cooking the stuff at home. First off, I have my cheddar cheese. Now, I do this, um, the cheddar jack. I just add a little bit of water. I actually add a little too much water, but since we're melting this in the eggs, it doesn't really matter. Um, I add a little bit of water, just enough to sprinkle in there, roll it up like this, and set it in the fridge for about an hour. You'll have perfectly hydrated cheese in no time. I did mix up the egg mix. We have our Canadian bacon in a Ziploc bag here, all hydrated, and our sausage is all hydrated, and our hash browns. Now, out of all of these, hash browns take the longest to brown up, so we're going to cook these first, and again, we're doing this all in one pan. We're going to move the stuff off and cook the next item in, but we're doing it all in one pan because the hash browns take the longest. This is already cooked, so all we're going to need to do is heat that up towards the end. The eggs take the second longest, and that's not very long. And then you're going to have that, so I'll warm that up last. So let's get this on here and start it off. All right, so i got my basic seasonings out here that I add with my hash browns, garlic, onion, and uh, some salt and pepper. I do have this little, uh, if you go camping a lot or if you're packing this in a bug-out bag, these are very handy. They are very expensive for what they are, but they are very handy. Just a little bit of olive oil in a pan, okay, and in a container. We're going to put it in the pan. Put it open here. Fire that up. And as you can see, that's nice and easy. And I'm just going to add this to the pan. So that'll give us a little bit of a oil to uh, get our hash browns going. Once that's heated up, I'll bring you back once the ash browns are kind of getting getting browned up. And uh, we'll move on to the next item. All right, so I'm going to add the hash browns. You want to make sure, since you're dealing with oil and possibly liquid, that you rinse the hash browns. You wring the hash browns out. I know that sounds kind of weird. But it's going to be splashing stuff everywhere. So you definitely want to make sure that you get them as dry as possible. And then mix them around in there. You don't really need too many. I kind of hydrated more than I thought I'd need, but that's okay. I'm going to add a little spice to them, a little garlic and onion and salt and pepper. Add a little onion. And you can do this to taste however you want. Garlic. And salt and pepper, my salt and pepper mixed together here. By the way, these are little tic-tac containers. For those of you wondering, I use these for, uh, in my bug-out bag with my spices, I use them in there because they stack together really small. You can put a ranger band around it. Now I put a little spice in this, just a little bit of kick to it. And you notice I've turned it off because it was getting a little too high, so we're going to turn it back on again and cook this stuff up. Bring you back when that's all browned up and ready. So as you can see, within about three minutes, these are starting to brown up nicely. I do have it up on a high heat because I want to brown them up quick. But you see they're starting to look really good. So we'll finish those up and then we'll move on to the eggs. All right, so these are pretty much done, as you can tell there. Take a look. Pretty much done and ready. I did make a whole lot here, so we'll just kind of fold it over on the plate. We're going to add a little bit of butter for the eggs. That's kind of hot. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. As you can tell, it's way hot. <laughs> We're going to turn that down a little bit. <laughs> so I don't set off my smoke alarm out here. And we're going to pop in the eggs. Now, you probably won't even have to turn it back on for the eggs. Maybe towards the end. Uh, now, as the cheese goes, I put the cheese in after the eggs are starting to get solid. Once they're scrambled up, then I'll put the cheese in. Otherwise, your eggs will get really runny. Um, 
if you put the cheese in while they're they're still cooking. I could make an omelet out of this, but I think I'm just going to go with scrambled eggs. Maybe we'll need to turn the gas back on in a minute. But uh, when they're done, we'll bring you back. All right, so now's a good time to put the cheese in. You see they're almost done. So I'm going to turn down the heat a little. Open up the bag of cheese. There we go. And I'm just going to drop the cheese in there and mix it up a little bit. And we're going to get that going. Now when that's all done, we're going to heat up the sausage and the Canadian bacon. And I will bring you back to put that in the pan when that's ready to go. All right, so that's what we got so far. Looking like a pretty hearty breakfast for at least two people. And that's the thing you're going to have to learn with this stuff is when you're cooking with it, um, it is a lot, it tends, the volume tends to increase. So you don't need to hydrate a lot. You'll learn that by practicing with it, and that's why I tell people I think it's a good idea to practice with the foods that you're going to be storing for long-term storage. I know with freeze-dried food it can be a little expensive sometimes, but if you practice with it, Trust me, when it's time to use it, you'll be happy. Now these are all fully cooked, those, uh, those two meats, the Canadian bacon and the sausage. They're fully cooked, so all we're going to do is run those to warm them up and brown them up and put them on the plate, and I got myself a breakfast. So we'll bring you back once those are ready. All right, so this is definitely done. We're going to take this off the heat, put it down here. There we go. And there's your sausage, and there is your breakfast made in one pan on a little tiny butane stove. And I'm going to have a good breakfast this morning, let me tell you. But there it is, real simple and easy to make, very, very easy to put together. And, you know, think about this. A lot of people talk about the cost of freeze-dried foods, but I can put this stuff away, and 10 years from now, if there's an emergency or disaster, I can walk into my storeroom, pull it off my rack, and there I go. I have breakfast just like that. And it'll look just as good as it does right now. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. The link will be down below. My link saves you 15%. Just click the link, shop as you normally would, and you will save 15% on all of the food that he has on there. And as you can tell, it's a very wide variety. So you can save 15% on it, get yourself ready, get yourself set up for any kind of future emergency and not have to worry so much about rotating cans and stuff going bad. Freeze-dried food lasts a good long time. I would store it in a fairly cool, dry environment. You don't want to stick it in your garage in 150-degree heat all summer long. But other than that, great stuff, and it lasts a good long time. Below that link will be our Amazon affiliate store. If you're interested in buying anything you see on the store, including that stove, you will find that in our affiliate store. After that is our My Patriot Supply link. If you have absolutely nothing right now and you're interested in getting started a little bit, we have a deal, three-month kit, $150 off. That's a lot of food to put away for that quickly, and you get $150 off it. And below that is our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. Again, there's nothing to join with Thrive if you don't want to. If you just want to buy some of the food and try it out, you can do that without joining anything. People have always had this conception, you have to join something. So anyway, folks, check out the link down below to save 15% on freeze-dried wholesalers' food. That is one nice-looking breakfast, and I'm going to go eat now. Folks, if you're not stocking up now, you're really fooling yourself. We are coming in some hard times. So make sure you go out there and get yourself some food, whether it be freeze-dried or even canned goods. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.